What's up guys, Game Fiend Feed of All Games here, and I think this gameplay should be well al long enough for me to to go over what I've been getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh. Well, the whole getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh thing. This should be a long enough gameplay. And this is another King of the Hill World of Prescott series match. And this is also another game where I had with uh, bad teammates. Uh, a couple of weeks ago on um, the Predator 32, and where if you guys watch my videos, you should know him by now. He like poses like a madman. Thank you anyway, Predator. Um, he started a Yu-Gi-Oh clan for us on Duel Network, and in the clan is myself, Game Fiend. Um, he he's the leader, Predator 32. Um. Um, we have DP, uh, Dark Phoenix, 1,662, um, another friend of mine, Sorrow, and okay. another friend of mine, Absolute Zero. And basically, it's basically what we're, well, we're in our first battle now, it's a crossfire, crossfire match. I'll explain that in a couple of minutes, because I lost my first, first battle. But, um, Pred thought it would be a, uh, oh, and my other friend, Sonic Lord. Yeah. Uh, my friend Pred, um, Predator32 would thought it would be a good idea for us since we all play on Dueling Network. Since, and we all know each other in real life, why don't we just make a fun, might as well just do it because we're bored, fun team on Dueling Network forums, a clan. So why not? Um, the deck I'm using is the Exodia deck. And this thing gets a lot of hate. Like, it gets serious hate. Like, I could win... I could probably see, well, I'm going to tell you probably why the reason it gets so much hate is if I get a good enough hand, I can win in three turns. Yeah, I can get Exodia in three turns if I get a good enough hand. Um, the main cards I have in it, I have three appropriates. I have three one days of pieces. Um, what appropriate does is every time your opponent draws out of your draw phase, I get to draw two cards. What one day of piece does is... Um, we both draw a card, but until my next turn, you can't. Your opponent can't do any battle damage or battle damage zero. Um, I have two hand. Uh, excuse me. I have three hand destructions, and hand destruction does each player discards two cards and draws two cards. Um, I have three upstart goblins. Uh, I give you. Well, your opponent receives a thousand life points, and I get to draw a card. Um, I have. Two gravity binds, and that means uh, monsters that a four star higher can't declare an attack. I have messenger. I have two messengers of pieces, which means monsters that are above 15 or attack cannot declare an attack. But I have to pay a, a hundred life points each of my standby phases to keep the card active. What else do I have? Well, all five pieces of Exodia. Duh. Um, a Sangan. Uh. A dark hole, uh, a mass production factory, and I think three dark eruptions, three or two dark eruptions, and I think I have a pot of avarice. Yeah, that's that's my Exodia deck that I have on the line. Oh, three battle defenders. No, excuse me, not battle fa Three battle faders. Sorry. And what battle fader does? It's a monster. If I have no monsters on my side, if I control no monsters on my side of the field, uh, I can special summon him from my hand, and it ends the opponent's battle phase. And he has zero attack, zero defense, and once that card is destroyed, or, no, excuse me, let me, let me rephrase that, since Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very literal game. Once this card is removed from the field, it has to be removed from play. And excuse me for that. Um, so yeah, and that's pretty much that. Yeah, that's my Exodia deck. And this thing gets some hate. I've had three people rage quit on me on a row, but the good thing about, um, Duel Network is if the people quit, I get more experience points. Like, one person quit, I got 24 points. I was like, yay! And one guy called me, and he was like, oh yeah, Exodia is for, is for faggots. Meanwhile, he's using a Gravekeeper's deck. Or I've, or I've gotten one, oh, Zodius for pussies, and he's using a Dark World deck. Yeah. No comment. Dark World deck. Um, my friend Absolute Zero is using a Dark World deck, and it's pretty, well, it's Dark World. All you need to do is read, know how to be able to read, and you can use a Dark World deck. That's how good the deck is. Um, the one 
bad. I can tell you the flaw, the flaw of my Exodia deck right now. If you if you remove one piece of Exodia from play, I lose. That's it. I don't, I don't know if there's any cards, or I don't not know of any of any cards that could um bring back a card that's removed out of play. That's not. That's um, that's just a magic or a trap card. I don't know any of those cards. So yeah, if you if you remove um one piece of Exodia from play, I automatically lose. I can't win. Can't win because I don't have the firepower to detract your to attack your life points directly, nor do I have the strength to, to keep defending myself turn in and turn out. Um I could basically keep a good stall up to ten turns. And if I'm stalling you from ten turns, I I probably won the game by then, by the, at least the fifth. But I know I can keep a good stall up to ten to ten on front turns. Um Let's see another weakness. Of, oh, if you have anything that could, any card effect that could stop me drawing, drawing besides my draw phase, I lose. So I forgot. There's a monster that does it. I don't know the name of the. I don't know the name of the monster, but a friend of mine, Ruben, who's also on the team. Oh yeah, I don't know how to pronounce his gamer tag. I think I don't know how to pronounce his tag when doing that. But Ruben's on my team as well. Um, he side decked it and he used it against me, and I couldn't win because. 85% of my cards have to do with me drawing out of my draw phase, and I can't do that, so I can't draw Exodia, so I get rushed down and I lose. So beating Exodia is not that hard, you just have to have the right cards, or in this case, card, as I get a digger kill, respect the digger, but nobody's gonna do it. I think I've said that five times. Um, my other friend, um, my other friend DP, he uses ice barriers but he feels that they're not strong enough or in Yu-Gi-Oh terms or gaming terms broken enough to win at, at high level for this clan random clan battles thing we're doing I think this I think he could hold I think he could hold his own weight using it um, but he doesn't think so so he's gonna find a deck that's broken enough that he can enjoy because my Exodia deck is broken as all holy hell but I enjoy using it I do have a dragon deck that I could easily use that has red eyes metal that has a red eyes metal in it, but I'm not m pretty much of a dragon fan, and I'm not a fan of that deck. And that deck is pretty broken as well. It could win easily, but I'm not a fan of the card, so I'm not going to use it. I have thought about using the battery deck with the battery mods. I don't see people use it on Google Network or real lives. I, I don't understand why. They're good cards. They have good effects. They could work together. They could, And most importantly, they could swarm. Yeah, that's most important in, in the Yu-Gi-Oh game now. They could swarm. Um, on decks, I've seen a lot on doing that work. This, 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 like, which makes me believe that there's no variety or no, no creativity anymore. I've seen a lot of agents. I've seen a lot of agent decks. I've seen a lot of fairy decks. I've seen a lot of. I haven't seen a lot of Exodia decks. I've only bumped into one, which is very odd. And seeing as Exodia gets so much hate, I would figure everybody and their mothers running it, but. Um, I've only bumped into one Exodia deck. Uh, bumped into well, not including Absolute Zeros. I bumped into two Dark World decks. I bumped into uh Fairy decks because you know you could have a Fairy deck and you could have an, a an Agent deck. I uh, bumped into two a I bumped into two Fairy decks. I bumped into a Star no a Blizzard Stardust Dragon deck. And it scared the fuck out of me. I didn't know what the shit was. I had to read an essay. He got Stardust on... No, he got Stardust on first turn. Then second turn, he got Blizzard Stardust. Because uh, I think it comes... No, Salt. Excuse me, excuse me. Not Blizzard. Salt. Salt Stardust. And he got Assault Stardust second turn. Because you could um, summon Assault Stardust with a trap card. And it's a... It's not a Synchro. It's a, um, it's a, it's a normal effect monster. I think its attack is 3,000. And it can stop everything when it sacrifices himself. Unlike unlike Stardust, where it can only sacrifice himself just the, the negate effects that destroy monsters. No, 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 no. Assault Stardust can activate itself to stop any damn thing. To sacrifice itself, goes to the graveyard, and at the end of the end phase, you get the card back. Um. So yeah, I lost to that deck because I was using my Elemental Heroes deck. I'm a big fan of Elemental Heroes. Um, by the way, on a side note, um, did you guys ever one ever notice that the Elemental Heroes is the bootleg Justice League, just as the X Sabers are somewhat the bootleg X Men? 
just this random funny inside joke thought that probably nobody ever noticed. Oh, and um, battery cell D, battery cell D man, is Dora cell. And you know what gave it away? The number one on its chest. And besides the fact that it's battery D, because there are D batteries. But yeah, because Dora cell, I think if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, is the number one selling battery in the world. I think I'm not sure. I may have to Google it. You could Google it if you will, and, and you could correct me if I'm wrong. But the one, the way it's shaped, and the one on his chest gave it away. And I was like, that's pretty funny how how Yu-Gi-Oh has inside jokes on most of their cards. What I'm waiting for is for them to make a wrestling wrestling themed card. Because as you guys know, I, I'm a huge wrestling fan. And I think I might actually do uh, a wrestling a wrestling commentary on my thoughts of what's been going on in WWE the past the past few months. I, I should. I should do one on Saturday and it should be up by Saturday. Yeah, that's what I'm definitely yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna do a wrestling commentary on Saturday. But um back to the crossfire that my um clan is in and doing that. By the way, we call it Team Tech because at one point or another we all used to go to this college called um New York City College of Technology, so we call ourselves Team Tech. Um we're in a crossfire right now between this team called Team Plasma. Yeah, they they they're in the Pokemon. I don't know if they have a Pokemon team. I probably could buy either, buy their crap with my model Fire Delphus team because I play Pokemon as well. Um, but anyway, back to you, Gil. But um, they're called Team Plasma. Um, the guy that I lost to, he had a, a TG deck. I'm not really familiar with those monsters, but I'm gonna tell you why. The, I lost because well, it's due, it's partially due to my own fault, not backing up what the ruling that I knew was right from the start. Basically, a reason because you do a match, so it's whoever wins two out of three. Basically, how I lost the first match was um, he activated a magic or a trap card. I had face, face down, the, I had um, dark bribe face down the field, and I had appropriate face down the field. And it was uh, I ended my turn, and he it was his goal. He activated a magic or a trap card. I don't recall what it was at the time, and I activated dark bribe. And Dark Bribe's effect is um, negate the activation of a magic or a trap card, and your opponent gets to draw one card. So he drew. A, so as soon as he drew a card, I activated Appropriate, and appro and uh, Appropriate says only activate this card when your opponent draws um, outside of their uh, their draw phase, which he did. So we're having an argument, quote unquote. Saying that I can't do that because I'm chaining a, a speed 3 card to a speed 1 card. Yes, appropriate is a speed 1 card, but I'm not, I was not chaining it to Dark Bride. I was chaining it to the fact that he drew outside of his draw phase. Then we have a whole argument talking about we can't do it, so off and so forth. And I would have won if he would let me activate that appropriate. So I lose the first round big deal. And, by, and right after that match we found we find the actual ruling on appropriate and henceforth I was right big deal there because I've been using the card appropriate for the past three years now um I was right and so but the second the second match that we had with that I lost France Square they didn't draw the right cards so I lost so right now team plasma is up one zero and the how it is is basically is we have five people in one sub I went first, and the other guy, I don't remember his tag, he went first. So he beat me, so now he has to, I think he has to beat, um, he has to challenge the next person that's in line for my team. And it's the first person who runs out of teammates that can battle loses. So right now we're down 0-1, but I have faith in my team, especially in um, Joseph's Dark World deck and in Ruben, because Ruben is a counter pick and son. Oh wait, no, Ruben's not registered for this battle damn oh well because ruben's very counterproductive he knows how to use his side deck oh that's what i say i have faith in Ru i have faith in uh absolute zero's dark world deck because that shit is horrendous horrendous in a good way um uh pred is a sub for this but i hope he falls back on his dragons because his um insect deck is only ot or uh, is only old gt no oc OCG, excuse me. OCG is not um, TCG, which means uh, TCC stands for a trading card game. OCG stands for official trading card game. And what basically, the, the one that starts with the O is meaning cards that are still only out in Asia. 
The one that starts with a T, the T is cards that are out in um, America. And you can only, for this for this one, you can only use cards that are all, that are in America. And Pred's deck, Pred's main deck is not out in America. It will be released in America in the pack called Order of Chaos starting January 24th. He's very excited about this, hence he's going to buy the pack so he can get the card, so he can play with it in real life. Hopefully go to tournaments and make some money off this game. I'm going to make money off him because I'm going to buy the packs on the cards that he doesn't get. I'm going to sell to him because I'm that good of a friend. It's a troll face here because I'm going to give him. Obviously, I'm going to give it for him. Obviously, I'm going to give it for him good fast. I may give him. If Insector comes common, I may give him like, I don't know, two common cards for a dollar. As if I would have sold it to a random, I will just sell the common for a dollar. Or I would look up I would look up online and see what its value is. I'll probably just trade it, sell it to Pred for half the value, because I'm because we know we're friends like that. Um uh, who else is oh um I have, I have very good faith in Sorrow. Sorrow Sorrow's decks his his decks are evil. His his decks are should be just borderline just banned. Like he has um he specialize his main deck specializes in um drawing out, making you draw out. And him gaining his life points, and, and and I think and removing your cards from play. So not only are you drawing out, your cards are getting removed from play, and he's gaining his life points. So you're losing like three ways straight to hell. His main deck is evil. Um, I don't know the cards in his deck, but I don't think I should even announce. If I knew the cards, I don't think I should even announce the cards. Because, you know, who knows if the team is listening. But I highly doubt that. But then again, I just threw away my whole deck on the on this YouTube commentary anyway. But it doesn't really matter. Zizoni is very easy to counter. People just don't think. A lot of thinking a lot of thinking and strategy is involved in Yu-Gi-Oh! And people don't seem to use that. Um, Sonic Lord's decks I faced are okay. So I'm even though we're down 0-1, I'm pretty confident that... We're gonna come back and win, and if at least not win, we're gonna make it a close. Like we may lose like four or five, or we just may just come back and win five three. But I have very faith on our team that we're just gonna come back and win. Um, that pretty much wraps it up on the the Yu-Gi-Oh talk. Other decks that I've started making on Pack Force Five and Dueling Network is I made a No Trap No Magic deck. Which I have royal three royal decrees and I try to push to get out um silent swordsman level level seven and what silent swords level effect is basically the Jinzo from magic cards and its attack its, its attack is twenty eight attack and with royal decree on the field you can't use any trap cards so basically no magic no trap bam you have to beat me with brute force or monster effects uh excuse me um. Another deck I've been working on, well, I have the battery deck. That's pretty much perfected. That's as good as a battery light deck that it's, it's going to get. I've uh, perfected with that. Um, What else decks I've been working on? I've worked on a warrior, a very, very aggressive our, uh, warrior warrior deck. I don't know what it is. I'm a Seth's warrior. I just, don't, I just don't understand it. Like, I have three warrior decks for no reason. Um... This warrior deck has this one has synchros in it and XYZs and I'm some I'm very against using synchros and XYZs but they're just too good not to use so f it why not use them um I have I have three colossal fighters in it I have well obviously three Maradins, three command knights I have two obnoxious Celtic guardians and for those of you who don't know what obnoxious Celtic guardian does um any monster that it attacks it that's overnight that's 1900 or higher. It's not destroyed by battle. Um, I have I, have, I forgot what this tuner is called. It's a it's a four star tuner. It doesn't do anything special, but I have a couple tuners. Thus, so I need to get Colossal Fighter out. And what Col Colossal Fighter does is to sync. It's a level eight synchro. It has 28 base attack, but for any warriors in any graveyard, it gains 100 attack. And when Colossal Warrior is destroyed. By a result of battle is in the graveyard. You can special summon one warrior type monster from your graveyard to the field. Hence, if you didn't realize by now, you could special summon it after it dies. So you could special summon it back to the field after it gets destroyed by battle. Which is pretty awesome. Um I do oh I have three solidarities, and what solid solidarity does is for any specific same type monster in your one type monster in your graveyard. Hence, since it's only a warrior deck, only warriors are going to be in my graveyard. 
all your monsters on your side of the field get um, 800 plus attack. And it's not a field card. It's it's a it's a um, magic zone card. Conti excuse me, continuous magic card. So I have three of those. Um, it's way better than A forces. I don't know why I was using A forces. I should have been using that all along. Um, so yeah, I have three solidarities. I have three world decrees. I have two or three mystical face typhoons in this deck. Um, let's see what else I have. I think I, yeah, I have one lightning vortex. Uh, I think I have two goblin attack forces, but that, yeah, those some of the monsters that I'm just remembering that I have. I have one land star. What land star does is increases all warriors on your side of the field by 400, and it's a three star tuner. Um, yeah, that's pretty much I can remember off the top of the head that I have in this deck. But it's overall, it's a pretty pretty decent deck, in my opinion. And I have fun playing with the deck, whether win or lose. Um, but that's pretty much it on my decks. That's pretty much it. All I have to say about the the Yu-Gi-Oh topic. Topic, uh, guys, stay tuned for the the wrestling commentary that I'm probably gonna put up on Saturday. And the reason why I'm waiting on Saturday is I have to. I don't read spoilers because if I, if I really want to do it, I could have it up by tomorrow because I can read SmackDown spoilers. Since you guys should know by now, whoever watches WWE, SmackDown is taped on Tuesdays. The spoilers are usually on the websites by Wednesdays, but I like to watch SmackDown as if it's live. But anyway, that's the end of this, this long ass commentary. That's the end of the gameplay. I carried my ass off. We won. And I'm out of here, guys. Game Feed Feed of All Games. Later. Peace.